tonight on American Greed Bonus Edition. Troy Stratos goes through life asking, why work for money when it's so easy to steal? In all, he makes off with more than $40 million from people who call him a friend, like Nicole Murphy, Eddie Murphy's ex-wife, worth millions. Troy and I had such a great relationship. He were, we were like the best of friends. But Stratos is more often described as a predator than a friend. He dazzles his victims with charm and promises. He was willing to sign an $11 million, 11 movie contract with me to keep the exclusive to him. Then he destroys them. He yelled at me for a half an hour, called me stupid, incompetent, lazy, idiotic. But his is a con that pays off big. He was spending, on average, $1 million a month. He's the greatest con man, in my opinion, that ever lived. In early 2007, Troy Stratus is living in a 12,000 square foot mansion outside of Sacramento, California. He is taking care of the house because the owner, his good friend Nicole Murphy, actor Eddie Murphy's ex-wife, has moved to Los Angeles. He gets a call. It's Nicole. She has entrusted Stratos with her money, and now she is being hounded by creditors. I'm in a situation. I have bills. I have loans. I have all this housing. I can't take it right now. Stratus reassures her that everything is fine, but he is lying. At this point, he has already taken at least $13 million from trusting victims like Nicole Murphy. And the question is, what is the secret to this con artist's stunning success? The answer begins in Maui in 1994. Stratos is 28, an aspiring film director. He comes to the island to work on a film script with the man who will become one of his best friends in life, Richard Hack. He was an extremely articulate and charming, and I thought that I was mentoring this uh, substantial talent. Hack is a journalist, a best-selling author of more than a dozen books. He is a favorite guest for television interviews. Richard Hack uncovers America's first billionaire in his new book, simply called Hughes. In Maui, as Stratus and Hack become friends, Stratus describes the sad details of his childhood, a story he tells many victims. He is an unwanted baby. His father, who he does not know growing up, is black. His mother is a white teenager. He is raised by his grandparents. Every time someone would come over to the house, Troy was removed and put in an outbuilding because he was mixed. He wasn't white like the rest of the family. The story might be true, or it might be a setup. It's a soft spot, I think, for most people. When they hear that you've had a traumatic childhood, they're willing to forgive so many things because they say, wow, look at everything you've overcome. Maria Konnikova, author of The Confidence Game, has spent years studying the psychology of con artists and their victims. And so he taps into that right away. He's the victim. You're not going to be the victim. As Stratos continues his story for Hack, it all seems plausible. Young and handsome, Strato says he heads off to modeling school. There, he becomes friends with beautiful Nicole Mitchell. He is 16, she is 14, and destined to be discovered. 11 years later, she marries comedian Eddie Murphy. And Stratos also gets a claim to fame. He tracks down his father, who is now married to Nancy Wilson the legendary jazz singer. She is a huge boost to Stratus' credibility. His stepmother was famous. I mean, Nancy Wilson is no slouch. 
you know, with their 60 albums and Grammy Awards and all this other business. But then Stratos tells Hack his big lie. He says he made a fortune as an early investor in AOL and now has millions invested in the Middle East in oil. He said he had an endless amount of funds. He said he would never be able to spend the amount of money that he had. His social security records tell a different story. The last time he ever reports any income is 1993, $30,000. But Hack is not interested in Stratos's money. What is most important to him is that Stratos shares a dream of his. I was impressed by the fact that this was a guy that didn't like violence on TV or in the movies. And I thought, it is time for us to return to a gentler time, like the, the glory days of Hollywood, the golden age, and this guy agreed with that. With Richard Hack clearly a believer in Troy Stratus, Stratus takes off. He heads to Vancouver in British Columbia. He opens a production company in the prestigious Waterfall Building and hires Tamara Hegan as part of his team. You had a bunch of young people who had no experience in the industry at all that were being told that they were amazing, they were gonna be able to make it big. Stratos tells his team they will be working with Britney Spears and Donna Summer. We bought in 100%. We believed in him, we believed in his vision. And he is big on making promises. He was gonna buy us all a house, I was gonna have a house. And sometimes, Stratos' promises are particularly manipulative. He had a habit of picking up waiters, lavish them with gifts, convince them that he was gonna make them the next big thing, get them to sign an agreement, and slowly but surely it would come around to, you know, it's a, a more intimate relationship is what he's looking for. And while he is pursuing relationships with young men, he also begins a relationship with a woman with just what he needs, money. She is a realtor worth millions, named Vivi True. Vivi True is the name of this very lovely woman who was enamored with Troy. She was in love with this guy for sure and showed that love by affording him capital, giving him money. Stratos tells True his money is tied up overseas, that he just needs a loan. She doesn't know that he told the same story to another woman who loved him just a few years before. Stratos has perfected the sweetheart scam. It relies on kind of this emotional need that all of us have. I mean, we want, we want love. And Stratos knows that when someone loves him, he is in complete control. He would blackmail her with his affections. If she got too upset about the money, then, well, I don't think that we should date. I'm not gonna have dinner with you. I'm not gonna see you. And Vivi True caves to his threats. Over several years, she loaned Stratus an astounding $10 million. And he blows through it as if the supply will never end. He would buy clothing cars. He walked in and bought a G-Wagon uh, from Mercedes-Benz dealership for cash. As he goes through Vivi True's life savings, his big projects are going nowhere. And if anyone challenges Stratus in any way, there is hell to pay. One of his favorite tactics was public humiliation. He had me stand up in the middle of an open office and he yelled at me for a half an hour, called me stupid, incompetent, lazy, idiotic. His staff's initial excitement has turned to fear and dread. It got to be really scary. And you got to a point where you were like, what have I gotten myself into? And so the entire team quits. 
Stratos has tapped Canada for all he can. It's time to move on. <laughs>